Renal colic. When the stone obstructs an area of the ureter, pressure builds up in the urinary tract wall. This stimulates the production of prostaglandins, which dilates the ureteric lumen, to help pass down the stone and increases the pressure within the kidney, which leads to diuresis. The prostaglandins also cause ureteric smooth muscle spasms to facilitate the stone passage, which is the cause of excruciating pain. The severity of pain does not relate to the size of the stone. Renal calculi can become impacted, most commonly at the ureteropelvic junction, near the pelvic brim, or at the ureterovesical junction. Types of calculi. Renal stones can be formed when the fluid content is not adequate. Crystallization of salts and minerals present in the urine leads to stone formation. Types of renal calculi are below. 1. Calcium oxalate calculi. 80% of urinary stones are composed of calcium oxalate. These usually occur in patients who have alkaline urine. Such stones have sharp boundaries, which have the ability to damage the ureteric wall, causing bleeding within the ureteric lumen. 2. Phosphate calculi. Phosphate stones occur in 15% of the cases. These also grow in alkaline urine, most commonly in the presence of urea-splitting organisms. Such stones can become quite large and become what is known as staghorn calculus. 3. Uric acid and urate calculi occur in 5% of cases. 4. Cysteine calculi occur in 2% of cases. 5. Xanthine and pyruvate calculi are very rare and these occur due to inborn error of metabolism. 90% of calculi are radioopaque and can frequently be seen on plain abdominal or KUB x-ray. Etiology. There are several etiological risk factors associated with urinary stones. 1. Idiopathic calcium urolithiasis. There is unexplained hypercalciuria in which the serum calcium levels remain normal. 2. Hypercalcemic disorders, primary hyperparathyroidism, overproduction of parathormone due to a parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia increases the 1,2,5-dehydroxycholcalciferol. This increases the intestinal calcium absorption, renal tubular reabsorption, and bone resorption. This condition is found in less than 5% of the patients. 3. Prolonged immobilization. Prolonged immobilization causes hypercalcemia and hypercalciuria due to bone resorption. 4. Milk alkali syndrome. Consumption of large amounts of calcium in particular with vitamin D causes hypercalcemia, alkalosis, and sometimes renal impairment. 5. Renal tubular syndromes. A. Renal tubular acidosis. Type 1 renal tubular syndrome can also cause stone formation due to low urinary citrate removal and hypercalciuria, and it causes calcium phosphate stones. B. Cystinuria. It's an autosomal recessive disorder in amino acid transportation in the gastrointestinal tract and renal tubules involving cysteine, lysine, arginine, and ornithine. Uric acid lithiasis. This can happen as a result of excess excretion of uric acid in urine or as a result of acidic urine. Uric acid is not soluble at pH less than 5.5. Patients receiving chemotherapy and with myeloproliferative disease have increased uric acid production. Increased uric acid production can also be caused by many other factors. Enzyme disorder. Primary hyperoxaluria. It's an autosomal recessive disorder of glyoxylate metabolism. The enzyme deficiencies cause increased endogenous oxalate production, which leads to stone formation. Xanthinuria. It's an inherited xanthine oxidase deficiency, leading to stone formation. 
secondary urolithiasis, dietary excess, excessive consumption of spinach, tea, rhubarb, cocoa, chocolate, and pepper increase urinary oxalate levels. Infection, proteus, staphylococcus, and pseudomonas, urease-producing organisms, break down urea and produce ammonia and CO2, which makes the urine alkali and promote the growth of staghorn calculi. Obstruction and stasis. Obstruction in the urinary flow, stasis, and reduced fluid intake causes the crystals to aggregate and become soluble. Drugs. Acetazolamide, allopurinol, thiazide diuretics.